Chapter 16 The train arrived at Birkenau at night. The cars clanked and groaned as the train came to a stop a half a kilometer outside the gates. It was a cloudy night and should have been dark, but the sky was lit up red like a bonfire. Black chimneys stood up in silhouette against the glowing sky, shooting flames from their tops, and the smell of burning flesh filled the air. I gagged. I waited for the train to move again to take us into that awful factory, but we didn't move. We sat for what must have been hours, all of us who could see out watching the flames, knowing that this was where we were going. Why were they holding us here? Was this one last torture, one last joke? Did they want to drive us to panic, to madness? If they did, it was working. The longer we waited, the more anxious I got. What was going on? Why aren't we moving? What are they waiting for? I said at last, my voice hoarse from thirst and fear. Don't you see the fires in the chimneys? A man next to me said. They have to finish off the last train load before they have room for us. I took in his words, too weak to react. We were just another raw material waiting to be processed. Shovel us in, shovel us out. I dozed again. Every time I woke, I was still in the cold train car, a dead man leaning against me. At last, the train jolted and began to move, and I woke for good to a pale yellow sun rising above the trees in the distance. They were taking us inside to the furnaces. They were taking us inside to die. The train car door opened. For a few steps, the dead body next to me came with us, held up between the living as we pushed for the door. But soon there was more space, and he fell, slumped, slumping to the floor with the others who had died on the trip. There were dozens of them, rag and bone skeletons who had perished of hunger, or thirst, or the cold, or suffocation, or overwork. We climbed over them, gulping in the fresh air outside before the capos and soldiers whipped us and shouted at us to line up. We assembled in a field just beyond the train cars, those of us who survived, looking more dead than alive. After another roll call to see which of us were still alive, the Nazis marched us toward one of the big brick buildings with chimneys. So this was it. The reality began to sink in, and I slumped under its weight. They really were going to kill us. I had come so far, endured so much agony and suffering. I had survived the work gangs in the ghetto, baked bread under the cover of night, hidden in a pigeon coop, had a midnight bar mitzvah in the basement of an abandoned building. I had watched my parents be taken away to their deaths, had avoided Amon Goth and his dogs, had survived the salt mines of Wazika and the sick games of Trezbinia. I had done so much to live, and now here the Nazis were going to take all that away with their furnace. I started to cry, the first tears I had said since Moshi had died. Why had I worked so hard to survive if it was always going to end like this? If I had known, I wouldn't have bothered. I would have let them kill me back in the ghetto. It would have been easier that way. All that I had done was for nothing. In a large, empty room, we were ordered to undress and pile our striped uniforms in a corner. In a different corner was another stack of clothes, silks of bright red and blue and purple and green, gypsy clothes. Now we knew who had fed the fires of Birkenau while we waited our turn outside. I was still crying as I pulled my shirt off and added it to the pile. The tears came unbidden, but I didn't try to stop them. Some of the other men were crying. Most weren't. I didn't care. I was tired. Tired of fighting. Tired of being brave. Tired of surviving. They whipped us and beat us again to hurt us into the next room, where shower heads lined the ceiling. I remembered what the man on the train had said, that you died fastest if you stood underneath one of the shower heads where the gas came out. Instead, I moved away from them near one of the stone columns set throughout the room. They packed us in again, just like on the train, but there was still a little room to move. When the door clanked shut, some of the men cried out. By now, we all knew why we were here and what they were going to do to us. Some people panicked and beat on the door, yelling for the Nazis to let us out, to have mercy, to spare us. Some people cursed them. Some people closed their eyes and muttered prayers. Some just stared off into space, waiting to die. Tears streamed down my face, tears I didn't know I had left. 
and I slid down the column to the ground, burying my head in my hands. Mother, father, my aunts and uncles, my cousins, my friends in Krakow, I miss them all so much. We waited, but no gas came. The cries of the men grew louder and more desperate. I stayed frozen to where I sat, not knowing what to think. Why were they waiting now? Maybe someone was standing on the hose, I thought crazily, and I started to giggle. Yes, that was it. Or maybe they couldn't get the fire for the furnace going. Maybe the match kept blowing out. Or the kindling wouldn't catch fire. I laughed out loud at that, and a prisoner standing over me looked at me like I was insane. Maybe I was. The Nazis had finally broken me. It was all a big joke. I could see that now. There was no rhyme or reason to whether we lived or died. One day it might be the man next to you at roll call who was torn apart by dogs. The next day it might be you who was shot through the head. You could play the game perfectly and still lose. So why bother playing at all? Still, the gas didn't come. I pulled myself to my feet and pushed my way through the men until I was standing right underneath one of the shower heads. Go on, I yelled at the shower head. Go on, do it. I dare you. I laughed again. What are you waiting for? I cried. Kill me. I give up. You win. The pipes moaned and rattled. Something was finally coming out. The men in the room got quiet, like we were all holding our breaths. I reached my arms up toward the ceiling. Kill me, I prayed. Please kill me and put an end to this. I'm ready. Water rained down on me. Freezing water so cold it made me scream. Water, not gas. I was going to live. I laughed and cried, and so did the other men. We celebrated as we shivered, hugging one another and shaking hands. All of us granted a last-minute reprieve by the Nazis. I was alive.